And the government has come under fire, as we all know now, for not pushing forward with its COVID plan B mm. like now, uh, despite a sharp rise in cases in the UK. Britain's reported 223 new deaths from coronavirus just on Tuesday alone. That's the highest daily figure since March. Now, plan B would see the reintroduction of mandatory face coverings and guidance to continue working from home, if you can. Joining us now from Westminster, the Health Minister, Edward Arger. Uh, Mr Arger, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Morning. Um, Morning. We heard yesterday the Health Secretary saying that you're looking very closely at the data and that having looked very closely at the data, um, you're not going to introduce Plan B. Everybody else is looking at the data and wondering why not. Well, there are a number of different opinions, and there will be a number of different opinions, about when is or isn't the right time to do that. For us, the key thing is the vaccine and the vaccine, the role of the boosters, and indeed the vaccine in uh, going into the arms of younger people. This is hugely important. That's what is keeping us ahead in the race. But as the Health Secretary said yesterday, um, that race is getting tighter. We're still ahead, and that's why we don't think now is the right time to move to Plan B. But what Sajid was saying yesterday is this is getting very tight. You need to get that booster when you're invited to get it or when you're eligible for it. And there are still, I think, around 5 million people who haven't had their first two doses. They haven't come forward for that. And I'd say to them, please do. That is the key. As long as we're doing that, as long as we're making progress on that, we believe that it isn't necessary to move to Plan B. But we monitor that hour by hour even right. and day by day. So, uh, as you're all saying on this, it's the booster that's the key to this. Um, bear with me, please, while I just tell you, read out a few of the messages we've had this morning. We were mm. talking about this confusion about the booster and we keep being told by people like yourself, no, there's no confusion. You get your letter uh, and you register and you go and have it. It's not happening in the real world out there. Sue M, just bear with me, I'll read out three messages. Sue M has just emailed us to say, following advice on your programme this morning, I just tried to book online. I'm 70, it's well over six months since my second jab, but the NHS website is telling me that I am not eligible. We've had four messages after that from people who've had the official letter telling them that they're eligible and to register online. They've gone online to be told online that they're not eligible. There's a woman who's desperately worried about her husband. He's well over the six months since the second jab. Uh, he has a very serious lung condition. Um, he can't get the booster because he keeps being told online that he's not eligible and basically to go away and come back later. The system's broken. You absolutely need to get on top of this and make sure that these booster op offers, when they come through, work, because at the moment they're not working. Well, there's two points there, and that's I'm, I'm grateful for that, um, Richard, and I hope when I've been on this show before, when you and your viewers bring personal experiences to it, and I will do so now, I say I will take that away and I'll look at it, and if there's something that needs fixing, we will fix it. Yeah. What we've done to the, the point underlying that is, up until now, we've relied upon those invitations going out and saying, you're eligible, please come forward. I'll take the point you made there, but we're also now moving to, if you've had six months and one week and still haven't been contacted or can't do it, to use the 119 number to put yourself forward for booking. There's one other bit, if I may very briefly say, which is the slight difference between the booster jabs, but also the third jab for those, for example, who have severe, uh, who are severely immunocompromised. And I appreciate that's a, that is a very complex um, uh, cohort of people. And at the moment, we're getting hospitals to look after them and bring those cases for because yes, they will Mr. most Arger, likely be under hospital treatment. As you but said, I, yeah, and, and yeah, the, go for it, Suzanne, you sorry. Know, the quote yesterday from the Health Secretary was, if you haven't been invited within a week of reaching that six-month milestone, then please get onto the National Booking Service and book online or phone 119. Now, we know from what the responses that Richard just read out that people are not being able, even if they have been invited, they're not able to get that no. booster jab. But it came with this warning from the Health Secretary, not just to save lives, but to keep your freedoms too. You have put the ball in the court of all of us, millions of people, and we can't get the booster jab that you're urging us to get. And you've threatened that actually our freedoms depend upon it. Actually, what you could do is introduce, reintroduce a, a mandatory mask rule, which could also keep down transmission of the virus. If, if the system isn't working, you're going to have to reintroduce other measures. Well, on the first part of that point, Suzanne, we've had about, I think, four million 
of those booster jabs given another roughly two million invitations have gone out. As I said to um, to Richard, and I'll always do it when I come on the show, if there is something that your viewers bring to it about something that doesn't appear to be working or where they're having problems, I will always take that away mm. and look at it and see if there's something we need to do there. But to your second point, which is about um, the other measures, plan B, if you want a better way of putting it, in which is uh, the mask wearing becomes not guidance or advice, but is, uh, is an injunction. As I say, we don't think now is the right moment to take that step or whether it's the right moment to take that, uh, whether we need to take that step. For one very simple, well, for two simple reasons. One is the one I've highlighted about that race and that we're still ahead of the virus. It's getting a lot tighter, so we need to take action on those jabs. But the other bit is at the moment, the NHS is under significant pressure. But just to illustrate very quickly, the last time we had this level of infections per 100,000, was I, which is about 450 per 100,000 a few days ago, it was, I think, at the back end of last year, beginning of this year. What we saw this year, uh, a few days ago, was 89 very tragic deaths from the disease and about 750 hospital admissions. What we were seeing back at the start of the year with the same infection rate was around 3,000 hospital admissions on that day okay. and, and around 600 deaths. So the vaccine has had a huge effect, not in 100% breaking, that's but in significantly yes. weakening uh, that link. And that's, that's why we think it's working, yes, but we has. just need to keep going. Yes, no, nobody's disputing that. We know that the vaccine rollout has had a huge success and it has effectively largely broken the link between serious illness and hospitalisation. We understand that. Um, and thank you, and we take it at face value that you say you're going to go away almost like a, con a constituency MP and go back to Parliament and go back to the Commons and have a look at this, go back to your office. Uh, I cannot emphasise enough, by the way, that those messages I read out were one of dozens and dozens and dozens, all saying the same thing. So all over the country, this, this is a real problem. What many people are saying is, and thank you for your, your, your undertaking to try and fix this, this is a piecemeal approach to the problem. And what we need, again, and we had it before, is a, is a vaccine czar. Somebody who is given the authority and the whip hand to actually crack that whip and get things sorted. Why can't we reintroduce that kind of system where you have a, basically a troubleshooter who fixes these things and that's all they have to do all day? Well, we've got... Um, and the two people you were talking about, I think, in that context, Kate Bingham, who procured the vaccines, did an amazing job, and my colleague, Nadim Zahawi, who was the vaccines minister. We have a vaccines minister. It's a lady called Maggie Throop. She's an MP in the East Midlands, and she is a fantastic minister. And her background, actually if I recall correctly, is in uh, medical research and science. Well, she's not fixed she, this problem. She's on the, she she's was appointed two weeks problem. ago. The problem, the problem that you she, say you're going away to see if you can fix, she's, she's not fixed it. Well, I, I will pick that up. When I say I'll go away to fix it, I will talk to my colleagues. I, I say that in, in good faith to you because I come on this programme. Quite rightly, you ask me tough questions. It's my job to answer them, but it's also my job to listen to what you say and what your viewers say and see if something's identified as a challenge. We look to see what we can do to fix it. And I'll work with Maggie to see if we can do that. I want to press this point about masks yeah. and Plan B, Mr Argo, because at the moment we have a level of cases, it's almost 50,000 a day. The Health Secretary told us that could rise to 100,000 a day. We have one of the worst infection rates, case rates, in the world. We, our death deaths are around 200 a day. I mean, that is... It's a shocking number. It's far worse than other countries, in Western Europe in particular. Other countries are now taking their own measures. Morocco's closed its borders to us. And that might happen with other destinations as well. What is your advice on masks? You've said you're not going to reintroduce the mandate. Yesterday, the Health Secretary says we've got our role to play in this. Um, we play our public roles. Uh, we have to set an example as private individuals. The example from the House of Commons is that you, on the front bench, is not wearing masks. Let's have a look at the picture of the, of the House of Commons. I mean, you know, what are we supposed to think? Masks hold down infections. We don't want 100,000 infections a day. We don't want any more people dying of COVID. Well, Susanna, you're right about um, what the Health Secretary said yesterday, and he... And your viewers um, will have heard him say, yes, the, it's important that people set an example and consider Why aren't carefully... Why are you setting an example in well, the Commons? Hang on a second, Susanna, let me answer the question. I, I know exactly, you know, I will answer that point. Um, and at the moment, it is not mandated. People have the guidance and people will make their judgments. Because I try to, when I came into your studio just now, which is a, a 
relatively small studio down the line because it's a small enclosed space. Um, your producer said, was I planning to take my mask off before speaking to you? And of course I am because I'm the only one in the room at the moment speaking to you um, and you wouldn't hear me if I didn't. But, um, but everyone makes that judgment call um, and we'll look at the guidance, we'll look at the advice and, and judge it appropriately. Okay. Now, of course, if, if we have to move to Plan to B, it becomes a rule. If you're not going to reintroduce a rule on masks and you say that they are good at reducing transmission, why do you not set the example in the House of Commons where you are all jam-packed in together? And you see and individuals, as we're saying to the public, there's the guidance, but make... Your judgment call, but you heard what okay, Sajid Javid so said. That, my judgment call, you, I, you would forgive me for making the judgment call that I shouldn't wear a mask because the but MPs on, aren't. Susanna, on, let me just go to what I was about to finish off saying, which is that what Sajid was saying yesterday is that, you know, during the summer, in recent months, um, we've seen very low levels of infection. It's been creeping up, but it's been lower and we've been outside and the vaccine plan has been working. He's now saying what he did yesterday was levelling with the British people, saying it's still working, but it's getting a lot tighter. Now is the time for colleagues and everyone to weigh up that guidance and think, as we go into the winter period, yes. what is the most but appropriate Susanna's judgment point, call for them have, to make? You, but you have to accept, don't you, that Susanna's point here, uh, which he's put very forcefully to you, is unanswerable. If you have a senior government minister saying, we should all be wearing our masks at all the appropriate times, and you cut to a shot of the House of Commons and nobody's wearing it on the front bench, it's a, it's, it's a really bad look. If you're, you're not gonna, setting if you, the example. If you're going to tell... You, you know, it's, it's, it's a, a yet again, and we've seen this over the last two years, it's very much a case of do as I say, not as I do. I mean, and if you're going to take some stuff away from this interview, which we're delighted to hear, perhaps you could address that as well, because that looks terrible. If you're telling us to wear masks, that looks awful. Just awful. I always seek to take stuff away from these interviews, including when, quite rightly, Piers was asking me very tough questions. Um, I can understand the point, and I think Sajid acknowledged that point yesterday in answer to a very direct question in the press conference um, about that. Um, there will be times when I've thought I'm about to bob up to answer a question and I haven't done it, but I do tend to, when I'm in the chamber, wear a mask. But there will be times where I haven't because I forgot to put it back on or I'm about to think I'm about to have to get up to answer um, a question. I think all colleagues will reflect very carefully on what Sajid said yesterday and on the guidance. All right, thank you very much indeed. We'll let you go back to the pavilion and adjust your Thank padding. You very much.